Today is decision time. Does rebuilding Helsingborg continue in its current form? Or have we got something else up our sleeve that's a little bit different? Let's go and find out. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 17 of this FM22 save, Rebuilding Helsingborg with me, Daniel. However, in 16 episodes, we've somehow managed to rebuild Helsingborg. So will this now become a builder nation or are we going to be changing the save slightly? That's the question we're going to be asking. If you're looking forward to finding out the answer and you are enjoying the series, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content, including our new top three playlist every Sunday. You can find a link to that playlist in the eye above, as well as our one club story with Hemel Hempstead Town, the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. And finally, you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But today is all about decisions. We are still at Helsingborg, as you can see, 3rd of March, the first game of a new season or the first meaningful game of a new season. But we've got to discuss some of the trials, tribulations, the frustrations that we have in this save and whether we're going to be able to continue in its current form. I've had a long weekend to think about this whilst away. I've also been reading all your comments over the last couple of episodes, and it's very clear what a lot of you guys want, and that is either to stay in Sweden with Helsingborg to try and build the nation up, or to stay in this region, because that seems to be something we haven't done before, and it's quite popular. And it has to be said, aside from the AI management, I'm quite enjoying Scandinavian football too, and I would like to stay and try and help this region if possible. So we are going to make some big decisions today, but we are going to start by having a look at what's happened at Helsingborg in the winter, because of course that could be crucial to us making our decision. So if we go and have a look at the schedule, I will show you that we've played three cup games, we've won all of them, 1-0, 1-0, 3-0. We weren't vintage by any means. And we've drawn AIK in a quarter final, which we will be showing in today's episode. So we are going to be at Helsingborg for at least one more game. What I've got to do, though, is show you what's happened in the winter transfer window so far. Because this is maybe where our decision starts to get made for us. A lot of the comments in favour of staying in Sweden were talking about how quickly the league would improve now that clubs have made it into Europe and the group stages and had three, four, five million pound in the bank. Well, we're going to have to dispel that myth, I'm afraid, because the AI has disappointed so far. So in terms of players that have come in, we've potentially got one winger to join and Daniel Rios, who I thought we'd flop, to be fair, for signing for nothing, but he'd been really poor. We've now managed to get a million pound for him and he's going to be going in the summer. We've also had a couple of players join the club courtesy of director of football, but nobody has really left the club a big note. So if we go and have a look at this season so far, a few fringe players have gone on freeze or on loan deals, but no massive sales, no one that really stands out or makes you say, what on earth are you doing there? Two players, though, have come in, courtesy of director of football, Andreas Grankfist. First is Roberto Correa. He is a 30-year-old Spanish right-back who is better than what we've got, but maybe not sensational. Another one with a long throw, maybe not the greatest player but definitely an improvement and that's something we have to take as a positive the other one probably the biggest money signing since we've been here David Seeger from Arebro who I think got relegated they did he comes in for 375 grand 23 year old Swede attacking midfielder and winger and a really good player actually it's a signing I was pleased with looking at the likes of Lundberg maybe moving out and a couple of others it does suggest that he's looking at younger players and he's looking at top class players too. However, we've had real trouble this winter getting players out the club. Langren, understandable, but Davidson, Lundberg, Al Hamlawi, all decent players. And we can't get them out. It's like Swedish football beyond the top three or four just hasn't got the money and hasn't got the infrastructure. And they're not signing players that would definitely be good enough for them. I do wonder if there's a bit of a clash with the transfer windows not lining up with most of Europe, whether that leads to some difficulties in the market, I don't know. But it seems to be reflected across Sweden, because if we go and have a look, despite what we'd all hoped for, which is Swedish football to improve, sign better players, we've not really seen much evidence of it. 
and if anything is actually going the other way. Nurkapin have sold their best player to Leeds, the Gardens have lost their best player to a Portuguese side, Malmo have bought in one big player from Nice but he's 34 years of age, he's declining physically at a massive rate, so maybe isn't the solution long term, and all they've got now is 6 or 7 brilliant strikers and nothing behind it. We have seen, though, other teams selling their best players too. Hammerby have sold a very good young goalkeeper, one of their best youngsters at the club. They were, of course, close challengers last year. AIK have sold their first choice goalkeeper. And most of the other transfers are sort of domestic ones between clubs in the division. So I don't really see where the league is improving anytime soon, which is causing a little frustration. Even if you look at familiar names further down that have come to this league, Craig Cathcart being an example to AIK, He's 34 and he's well over the hill. These are not players that are going to improve the league long term. Yes, they give it a slight reputation here initially, but it doesn't seem to be leading to further ones down the line. There's not really many great loan deals or loan deals at all that are going in. And even in terms of free transfers, it has been a little bit limited. One or two big names go into a couple of the big sides, but then equally some leaving. You've got the likes of Ola Toivonen, who's left Malmo to go to AGF. Looking a bit further up, there's not many big names at all. So it is a frustrating summer so far. Probably the best loan deal is a youngster from City to AIK. He is a good young winger. But again, is he improving the standard of the league? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little frustrated by what I've seen across Sweden. I've got to be honest. So we will be here if there isn't a right offer coming up. But I've decided to rebrand Rebuilding Helsingborg to rebuild in Scandinavia and the Nordic region. What that means in essence is I'm going to make the most of having a spell in Scandinavian and the Nordic region of football because I don't often get to manage here. I like the leagues, they're often quite competitive, albeit this one's been a bit easier than it should have. And what I've decided is if we go to the staff and the job centre here, we are going to keep an eye out for jobs across Denmark, Iceland, Finland, Norway, all of the countries in this part of the world. And if jobs come up, we're going to apply for them. And the first of those could be this side, Fremad Amagar. And I will apologise because I cannot do the Danish pronunciation of it, but they are a club currently languishing at the bottom of the second tier in Denmark. And they are a side in real life, managed by Peter Lovenkrantz. They've got a very good background. However, they are semi-professional, they're stuck at the bottom of that league and I've got a real feeling that could be a good rebuilding job. So I'm going to look for a chance to rebuild other countries as well and just have a real bit of fun in this area of the world because I think it's going to be enjoyable. It gives us the opportunity to stay in nations that we don't often get to manage in and hopefully it gives us another job that might be a bit more difficult. And particularly looking at that one, albeit it's not the ideal job in that I can't pronounce half the names, it is a very good one in the sense that being semi-pro, if and when we do get to the top tier and we're competing against the top professional sides, it should make it a bit harder. So I'm going to go for that job. I'm going to go for other jobs in the region and we're just going to see if we can get another rebuilding job. But if not, we'll give Helsingborg one more year. We'll keep an eye out on the rest of this transfer window. But for now, I'm going to apply for that job and that will be the first of many for this season. But with that sorted, a little bit of transfer work done here at Helsingborg and a big season to look forward to if we are still here. Let's go and get through to our first game on camera this season and it's the Swedish Cup quarter final against AIK. One of many big games left, albeit a few of the bigger sides have struggled again in this competition. Our attendances are going up. There are some positive signs, but I feel like they're only ones that will make us stronger rather than helping the nation as a whole. So you can see they've still got some of the old boys in, Lustig, Larsen, Lord knows how old they are now. I mean, Larsen is a very good player, but physically at 37, he's shot to bits. Mikhail Lustig at fullback. Again, there's not that turnover to bring in younger players, and it's a similar issue we've seen elsewhere in other saves. Let's go through to team selection. This is the side that has largely been playing in recent weeks. Hadjin and Tursic have rotated a little bit of fullback. Otherwise, there's not been a huge amount of change in this team. We've got very consistent with the side we've put out. Of course, we've got a slight physical issue there with Lingman, but we'll have a week off afterwards. And I did miss one other signing, actually, at the end of last season. And I don't know how I missed it. A current Luton man in real life has come in and joined the club. 
That man is James Shea as backup goalkeeper. 850 quid a week. What a man. What a legend. He came in at the same time as all the other deals that were pre-agreed. The ones we had on loan last year, Sivis, Garnas, those who kept on their contract after their year loan. And James Shea will now be our number two for the year, having been a bit of a Luton legend in recent seasons. So this is the squad that we've gone for here. Is very familiar across the board. Seager, I'm tempted to bring into the team, but I'm just going to leave it a little while. It means our 11 for today is Jolson in goal, ever improving between the sticks. Tersic and Correa, the fullbacks with Vidal and Weyberg as centre half. Alma, Jed, Hendrickson, Lingman, the familiar midfield three. And then the same up front. Vanden Herk, the spearhead. Ali and Lerper either side, but a slightly stronger bench than we had this time last year. Let's get through to the Swedish Cup quarter final. We won it last year amid very little competition. Let's see how Big Boys AIK can do against us this time. Will the City youngster play? Will their new star shine? Let's go and find out. Just how good will these signings make AIK? It looks like they're playing a back three. Kafkart is part of it, as is Milosevic, Lustica wing back. Larson in the middle and Machino, the City youngster, is in there too. So let's get through to the dressing room. Ask the lads to impress us. It's been a bit easy so far, so we've not been at our best. The two 1-0 wins in a cup were a struggle, but as fitness builds, I expect us to get better in front of a big crowd. Today, it's going to be our first big test of the year. Well, we are back very early on with a throw for Correa. Long one from the left-hand side. Headed back out to him as he stays wide. Chance to cross in. It's back to the edge to Lingman. Tersic cutting inside here. Wide to Correa again. Bit weird to see both fullbacks on the same side as Correa runs in and smashes the post. A pretty decent start, it's got to be said. We've not been dominant. We've not had shots on target, but we have had a bit of the territory. And we have had the only shots of the game. As Stefanelli holds the ball up for AIK. Can they create their first chance here? Seems to be a familiar pattern. All the teams playing a back three against us again. But Machino is in that inside left roll. And I'd expect him to cause trouble. So he plays Stefanelli and Son. Really good save from Jolson. He wasn't to know that the offside flag was up. And he keeps us at nil-nil. As we've got another long throw with Correa. Into the front post. They're still broken, aren't they? We've had a chat about this in the comments a few times. The throw-ins just seem to go in the keeper's arms over and over again. As it's cleared long downfield, Correa heads it away. Hendrickson to Lingman, through to Vanden Herk. Oh, we've scored from their goal kick. Brilliant stuff as Vanden Herk gets away. And he puts it in the bottom corner. 1-0 Helsingborg. You've got to say, on the balance of play, it's probably pretty well deserved. As with 10 minutes to the break, we're back on the right-hand side as Roberto Correa takes a short free kick. Almajed to Hendrickson and Lingman. Big ball over the left to Tahar Ali, who makes that run. Having a little poor spell again now as his cross is cleared by Van den Herk. Hendrickson able to recycle it, though. And here he comes down the right. Releases Lerper to the byline. He's got defenders marking him tightly. And it's cleared away as far as Machino and Sebastian Larsson. Can he find the right pass? Seems to be playing a bit safe here. You'd expect him to be the one looking to unlock the door, but they're so deep and there's so little quality that they do get away at last with Otieno. Intercepted easy by Lerper. He's just breezed past his man there. Clears it long down the right. Vanden Herk's unmarked. Three centre-halves against one striker. And Vanden Herk has 10 yards of space. It is so, so odd. But it's tipped behind for a corner. And we've got a chance to deliver from the left-hand side. Lingman will take it. Outswinging delivery. Have we still got the set-piece threat? Not so much. Rydell loses out. Hendrickson gets in on the edge of the box, though. The danger isn't clear for AIK. He delivers in. It's a good bit of goalkeeping. Tahar Ali ready to pounce at the back post, but Berlin holds. It stays 1-0. We've been the better side, but it's a Sebastian Larson corner, and we know he's good from nose. What a ball in that is. It was hit with power and whip. Milosevic at the front post gets across his man. It's a bullet header into the front post. 1-1 on the stroke of half time. Not deserved, but AIK a level. First goal conceded of the season. Let's tell the lads to give them fans their money worth. Let's get into the second half. We need a response because for the first time, we're in a little bit of trouble here. And with 25 minutes to go, the fatigue is starting to show a little bit. We're going to bring Adam Kaid on, on the left. He's going to replace Ali. Same on the right as Seager, the new man, comes on for Lerper. And then at the back, 
I would take off the book Tursic, but I want to keep the fittest players on the pitch. So Lingman is going to be replaced by Netabai. I'm not sure that that makes us that much stronger. And in fact, I might put Hendrickson centre mid and put Valencia on box to box. That might suit us better. But realistically, we need a goal and we need to get our dominance back in this game. I'm going to go a little bit more positive. I'm going to encourage the lads, but it's another AIK set piece. And that was a bit too easy. Unmarked Son at the back post, straight at Jolson. And he's able to deal with it comfortably. Now, can we counter and get a goal? As Kasper Vidal at the back, bit of a dodgy back pass. Releases Seager, though, the new man. He just gives it straight back to Milosevic. And Otieno can get away down the left. Well blocked from Seager, though. Got back, recovered for his mistake. You've got to be pleased with that. As Valencia goes wide to him again. Van den Herk holds it up. Valencia makes the run. Definitely adds a little bit of legs in the midfield. Gets in behind, likes to run box to box as Correa chips it up. Vanden Herk's in. Another lovely finish from Anthony Vanden Herk. It seems weird to think that he actually struggled a little bit in the second tier because since we've made it to the top flight, that man has been absolutely scintillating. Two for Vanden Herk and two for Helsingborg. And at the moment, we're heading through to the semi final despite having had less shots on target. So with a couple of minutes to go, we'll think about dropping to a balanced mentality. But at the moment, it's AIK playing out from the back and we've got to be wary. Craig Cathcart, the new man, aimless ball over the top. Tersic brings it down at left back to Jolson, the keeper. Big hoof over the top. Kaid loses out, but it falls for Tersic, the second ball. Hendrickson brings it down. Kaid again, the youngster. Blocked too easily. He took a little bit of time, dallied in possession, but again has recovered for his mistake and won it back. Vandenhoek to Hendrickson. Seager, the new man. First goal for the club. Hendrickson released him. He made that run from out to in behind the fullback and he slides it round the keeper with absolute composure to make it 3-1 and job done for Helsingborg. Looks like we're going to find a way to compete again. We really need the other teams to step up or maybe a change of scenery within the region. A 3-1 victory with only five shots on target, a brilliant first goal for Seeger and Vanden Herk, the hero yet again as we progress in the Swedish Cup. We're going to skip ahead to the match day for the semi-final. We're not going to play it today, but I just want to see if we get an interview in the meantime, because that could be big news for this Helsingborg story. Well, here we are the following Friday, and our job application has so far been unsuccessful but only because the Danish side cannot afford our compensation. We've rejected a new three-year contract offer from the board here at Helsingborg, and there is potentially another signing coming in, because there is a striker, Lazar Jovanovic, he can play off either wing as well, who's been linked with the club, would only be a backup player. And we've also got big injury news, because Andrea Velokia, who joined after his loan last year, is now out for three months, and his stamina has taken a massive hit as a result. So there are some worrying signs there. We've drawn your gardens away from home in a semi-final of the Swedish Cup. Should be a pretty winnable game. But this one, we're going to ask the board to reduce our compensation. So let's say, I'd like to be able to join. Please accept a lower fee. We'd rather you just concentrate on finishing the job you started here. Am I going to be forced to resign to get another job? I don't really know how to approach this because there's jobs coming up at a dense and other big ones. They're insecure at the moment. I think we're going to say, if you don't let me leave, I'll have no choice but to resign and the club will get no compensation because the other two options are both saying that we have to agree. This might end up with us not managing Helsingborg, but I'm going to have to threaten because I want the opportunity to discuss it. We're reluctant to see you go, but it's clear you want to leave. If they come in, we won't stand in your way. We believe it's important we stay on good terms though, so hopefully we can work together and build a positive future for the club. Good decision, Jacob Johansson. You needed to back down and you did. So thankfully, we haven't lost our job, but we've now got a proper opportunity to get a job rebuilding in Denmark. That is the perfect way to finish this episode. We will play the Swedish Cup semi-final off camera. It may be our last game for the club. But of course, if there's job interview or job offer news in the meantime, we will keep you very much posted with that. Because in terms of the job centre or the job security, sorry, there are two big Danish jobs that are coming up as well. Potentially having both been marked as insecure at the minute. I'm really intrigued to see how we end up. So if you did enjoy this episode and like my plans, then please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Let me know if you think I'm bonkers in the comments or whether you think it is ultimately the right decision. And what do you think of the Swedish transfer window? Because I've been really underwhelmed by it in truth.
If you want to stay up to date though and find out what happens as this crazy off season continues, then please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Daily FM22 stories, including our One Club Hemel story, which is back tomorrow as usual, and our top three playlist, which you can find every Sunday, and there's a link to that in the eye above. There's also links up there to the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. But above my head now is the top three playlist. A massive thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you here again next time as we try our very best to get a job rebuilding elsewhere in Scandinavia. I'll see you there. <laughs>